Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Last summer, Inquiring Minds member Ed Anthony sent me a care package full of goodies. I've done a review of a couple of the pens that Ed so generously sent me, like the very cool Paper Skater and the retractable Lanby 2. Today we're going to look at another pen Ed sent me. This is the Hero 565. Now I've already reviewed this pen quite a while ago, but this is a new and improved model Hero 565. One of the things they complained about with the original Hero 565 was the aerometric filling system, as it's a pain in the classified ads. Well, the sheriff gave his gun to the professor, and the professor gave it to Earl, and Earl shot the professor right in the classified ads. No ads. But Hero has updated the 565 to a cartridge converter. If you are unaware of the Hero 565, you can think of it like a fat $4 Parker 51. Who's fat? Join me and see why I'm impressed by this $4 fountain pen right now. One of the things that continues to amaze me uh, from the Inquiring Minds uh, fan group is your amazing generosity, good wishes, and people send me notes, like this wonderful note I just got from Miss Marilyn Darling. Dear Doug, thank you for being awesome. <laughs> You're awesome too, thank you very much. And this package that just arrived from Ed Anthony, who is a member of the Inquiring Minds channel. Thank you very much. Thank you to all you members who are so generous uh, in supporting my channel. But he sent me a whole raft of things. And I'm going to open this and hopefully be able to describe uh, all of the things that are in it. Uh, because he sent me a long email describing all the things that he's sending and his excitement at me having them. So what do we have, Ed? The packing list. A paper skater. Two. Another I tell you blade pen. Three. Two each. Other disposable pens. A blue Lanby 2 6051 retractable fountain pen. I was looking forward to that. Number five. A Jinhao 1001 long-tailed pen in black. A Hero 565 new design. I was just looking at these the other day. We'll do separate videos on some of these pens. Two types of pencil grips that might augment the grip size of the Lambi 2. Enjoy, Ed. I'm sure I will, and I'm sure our inquiring minds will enjoy as well. It's like Christmas in August. Okay, so this is the Hero 565. And I'm just going to open that up because I'll take a look at that later. I'm very interested in this pen. I have a Hero 565. I love them. They're a Parker 51 style, actually a Parker 61 style with that little arrow on them. And they're a lot fatter than a 51. But my 565 has an aerometric filler, which I really don't like. And this apparently comes with an upgraded, yep, it comes with a converter. And it looks like standard international, I might be wrong. But it's the, one of those push-pull converters. These things are fraught with difficulty as well. You can really have an accident on your hands. But I'm fascinated to try this out. I've been looking online for them. And they're cheap like borscht, these pens. But they actually write very, very nicely. So that's going to get a whole video on its own. Thank you, Ed, for that. That's terrific. And what I'd like to do today is show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. But before we look at this pen's parts and features, let's look at it next to its inspiration, the Parker 51. Here's my 1948 Parker 51. You can see how much thicker the Hero 565 is. In fact, it's a full millimeter thicker at the bottom of the hood. So for those of you that feel that the Parker 51 and clones like the Wingsung 601 and 616 and the Jinhao 52 are too slim, 
you might enjoy the bigger grip on the 565. And Hero has some other hooded nib options, like this model 616. It has a Parker 51 type clip, and it's very close in size to the Parker 51 itself. And it has an added feature of a tiny ink window right there. It's also an aerometric. And then there's the Hero 612. It doesn't have the ink window, is a little bit slimmer than the Parker 51. Uh, it doesn't have the Parker arrow clip, but does have double jeweled finials. Of course, the 612, the 616, and the old style 565 are all aerometric fillers, which are a pain to fill and almost impossible to keep clean. Let's look at this new model Hero 565 more closely. From the top, we see the steel cap has a relatively flat top finial, and then the cap tapers up quickly and then is straight for its length. There are eight courses of four engraved vertical lines in the stainless steel cap, which has some Chinese characters right there, which I assume mean Hero Pen Company or something like that, and 565 in a hollow font, which is the model number. And the clip is spring-loaded and nicely springy and very usable. And this is a nice feature for such an inexpensive pen. There's a very tiny step down to the barrel, but that edge of the cap is very sharp. I'll get to that in a moment. It is something I noticed on the old version of the 565 as well. The black injection molded plastic barrel is straight until almost the end where it tapers sharply to a rounded end finial that has a hole in it at the bottom. This shows that the barrels of the 565 new and old models are exactly the same. The hole is there to equalize the pressure inside the barrel because of the aerometric plastic sack. It actually isn't needed in this pen as it has a converter now. The cap slips off to reveal the black plastic tapering section and the hooded steel nib. The 565 utilizes a design feature uh, from the Parker 61 model, an inlaid gold metal stripe that points towards the nib, making it easier to orient the nib properly when you're writing. Here is my Parker 61 uh, with that inlaid arrow on the section. Hero has just refined it by making it a trapezoid. The section is much chunkier than the Parker 51 as we saw in the comparison. This pen is full of ink, so I'm going to use my older model 565 to pull this nib. Now don't try this at home folks because this does make marks on the nib as you can see right there. But I take my nail clippers and just pull. And out comes the nib, the feed, and the breather tube. And yes folks, I do clip my nails. I just keep them long on my thumb and these three fingers so I can serenade you all on my guitar. No extra charge. And you can see that the nib and the feed on the 565 are larger than the normal hooded size. Here's a normal size hooded nib for a Parker style fountain pen. It is a Chinese replacement, but it's the same size as the Parker. And you can see how much bigger the Hero 565 is. Uh, you can see that there's some Chinese lettering on there that I assume say Hero. And then of course the, the plastic feed and the breather tube. And we just slip that right back into the pen. So pulling the nib is possible, but finding replacements isn't that easy. The section unscrews to reveal the main improvement on this model 565, a cartridge converter. It is labeled Hero, and it's a push-pull converter, like that. The new 565 will accept both Parker, Long, Lamy, Long, and two Parker short cartridges, one in the section, and then you put the other one down into the barrel, and you can close the pen. Now that does actually make that extra cartridge stick in there, but that's where that little hole becomes really handy. You just take a paper clip and give it a push through that hole, and that cartridge comes right out. So that's really convenient. And the section is clear plastic. I have not tried to take the hood off. I assume it's glued on there. Uh, but it might be glued on there with something that you can actually heat to release. But I'm not going to give it a try. So this was the biggest drawback for the Hero 565 previously. 
you couldn't use cartridges. Now you can, and you don't have to source them from China either. You can purchase Lamy or Parker from your local stationery store. And the inside of the cap shows a plastic cap liner to seal the nib from evaporation. You can see those metal fingers that clutch the section when it caps. I mentioned this in passing earlier, but this edge of the cap is annoyingly sharp. So I'm going to fix it right now. I'm going to take some 4000 grit micro mesh and I'm just going to take that edge off that cap just at a slight angle all the way around. There, now it's not so annoyingly sharp. That edge isn't really an issue uh, until you post the pin and that's where you feel that sharp edge when it rests on your palm. The pen is very comfortable posted, especially now that it doesn't shred your hand. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. That seam between the barrel and the section can't be felt at all. The new Hero 565 is available on AliExpress for around $4 US and comes in five colors. Black, gray, burgundy, green, and a pale blue. There seems to be only one nib option, which isn't graded. The old model 565 is now only 56 cents for those of you who enjoy squeezing your sack. Oh, Whipple! Please don't squeeze the Charmin! Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the new model Hero 565 with a 1948 Parker 51, a Wingsung 601 Flighter, a Wingsung 616 piston filler and a Jinhao 85. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. They all post nicely with the exception of the Jinhao 85, which is a copy of the modern Parker 51, which is itself the least like the original Parker 51 of any of them. And you can see that the Hero 565 is thicker than all of them and actually shorter when posted. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. These are all steel nibs with the exception of the 51, which is a 14 karat gold nib. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Hero 565 and it has a medium steel nib. Let's check the wetness. I was surprised at how wet this nib was and also surprised with how very smooth this nib is. Just a hint of feedback. And the ink today is Waterman's Serenity Blue. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, well, don't expect too much out of this. It's a very stiff steel nib, as these steel hooded nibs are very stiff. Even a vintage 14 karat gold nib on a Parker 51 is still like a nail. And this nib writes between a 0 0.5 and a 0 0.6 millimeter line, which is a Western fine to medium or Japanese medium on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description and for our quote and for some reverse writing And it's very scratchy and very skippy. And for some quick writing.
This pen has no issues whatsoever keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I like the original Hero 565, but for the Aerometric Filler, which is a pain to fill and almost impossible to clean. Now Hero have made the pen not only with a converter, but also it accepts Lamy and Parker cartridges. Just that improvement alone makes me want to recommend this pen. But in addition, it's only four bucks and it writes like a dream. I was very surprised. And this clip, I just love the way this clip works. Now your mileage may vary as I have no idea whether this was just the luck of the draw with this particular nib, but buy one of each color and for a total of 20 bucks, you'll probably get one that writes like this. Perhaps you'll have five, one for every day of your work week. And if you lose it, you can replace it for less than half the price of a cup of coffee. There are two things that are still a problem with this pen for me, and that's the lack of nib options or even being able to swap the nib out for another one, and the sharp edge on the cap. The cap edge can be solved easily with a little light sanding. If you're okay with a 0.6 millimeter line, then the nib options are not a problem anyway. I like the thicker grip on this pen, as the Parker 51 is a bit on the thin side for me. There's one other issue for you OCD sufferers out there. The cap is a fingerprint magnet. So if that bothers you, avoid this $4 pen. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Ed Anthony for gifting this pen to me and drawing my attention to the new Model 565. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. Thank you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. this.